So yesterday we had a very heavy video. We talked about Ace and Whitebeard and their deaths and um, I felt like it was time to switch it up as far as going back to something pretty light and not as deep. And we'll touch on some more topics like that in the near future. But for right now, let's talk about Rayleigh and Odin. This gets lost sometimes where people think because you like one character or because you prefer one character, you dislike the other. Just want to preface this by saying I don't dislike either character. I think Odin is fantastic and I think Rayleigh is fantastic. I've made videos on each of these characters talking about how overpowered they are. So I think it's only appropriate to talk about them and compare them in regards to strength and portrayal because people have been talking about that recently and I want to just chime in, but I wanted to make a video about it. I think off rip it's a great comparison, but maybe a bit premature due to the fact that we don't know exactly how strong Odin is but that's why it's perfect because if you wait until we know exactly how strong Odin is then it's more definitive then this video isn't as interesting so we're going to talk about it before we have all the information and that's essentially what one piece is we're trying to guess certain things especially power scaling because that's all over the place but in regards to lore and theories etc these things that we don't know make videos more interesting we're currently getting flashback material for Odin and Roger and Whitebeard and I'm assuming Rayleigh is going to be thrown in there at some point so far in the flashback we've seen Whitebeard we've seen Odin obviously and we've seen Gold Roger we haven't seen Rayleigh yet but we have seen Shanks and Buggy so there's that in regards to the history of One Piece there are a few characters that have been hyped up the way Rayleigh has Odin has of course Whitebeard and Gold Roger those two speak for themselves but I'm talking about their direct subordinates the reason why this is so intriguing to me is the fact that I've been saying this for a while as far as like how is Whitebeard competing with Roger even though Rayleigh was on Gold Roger's crew Rayleigh is a huge X factor if Whitebeard is fighting Gold Roger who the hell is fighting Rayleigh it could have been Marco Marco was too young all these different things i've been saying for a while because remember that information that oda gave us about the second division commander being vacant for a long time and that's why ace took over that position i've been wondering who the hell was the person that was occupying that position and for me the person had to be formidable enough to go against Rayleigh, and that was my own personal headcanon to kind of make sense of the rivalry between roger and whitebeard even chapter 964 let us in a bit more in regards to that rivalry in which they showed us how the newspaper was like depicting information shanks and buggy in that panel they specifically said that they're going all out yet white Whitebeard and his new samurai from Wano, they're getting all the attention. Well, people are saying maybe that could be because Odin is from Wano and he's a new thing. It's a mystery. That's why he's getting all the attention. Granted, that's definitely a part of it. The fact that he's an unknown, but I think a huge part of it is the fact that he came out of nowhere. And they also said that he's a pretty wild dude. Outside of everything that Roger and Rayleigh were doing, Odin and Whitebeard, they were doing even more spectacular stuff. What I mean spectacular is, I think for Roger and Rayleigh, they'd probably been sailing together for a while. So they had a an operational approach and really obviously he doesn't have the same personality of Odin he's not such a Chad right he's more reserved calculated a Ben Beckman type Odin is the complete opposite he's flamboyant he's boisterous he doesn't think about things and we saw in the panels of the last chapter Odin was just jumping right in not caring about the consequence and in some ways that's how Luffy is where it doesn't matter the island Luffy is going to run off and get lost at some point and then he's going to do something crazy to get everyone's attention in the island Odin is the same exact way that's why he's making a lot out of waves to make waves back then and in the one piece world you have to be special of course odin had conqueror's hockey as well and we know with conqueror's hockey it's not that conqueror's hockey gives you qualities it's the qualities that you already possess that ultimately forces you to rise to the top for Odin having Conqueror's Hockey and the dominant personality that he was, even Whitebeard talked to him about, hey, you want to join my crew, but you don't look like the type of person to follow people. It was almost inevitable that Odin was going to be special outside of Wano. In Wano, we know what a legend he is, but outside of Wano, if he only had the opportunity to leave Wano, he was going to take off, and that's exactly what he did. There's also something to be said about the nature of Whitebeard's and Odin's relationship. Of course, Whitebeard called Odin little brother, which is different from how Whitebeard, in regards to how he treats all of his companions, he normally calls them sons from everyone that we've known he was the only person that we've seen to be mentioned someone on his level so there's credence there i know it was different in a few translations specifically jamna's box it said brother and visit made it clearer by saying little brother to imply that they're on the same level but whitebeard is still top dog secondly when you think about the great pirates in the world there are great right hands that follow them and those right hands it seems like they could do their own thing if they wanted to but they choose to follow this great person mainly talking about zoro and ben beckman we don't know enough about king katakuri's big mom son so i don't think she was ever going to respect him you can throw shiryu in there as well that's another video i'm going to make the relationship between a captain and a subordinate the purpose of that subordinate but that's not what we're here to talk about i want to compare Rayleigh and odin go off betrayal feats 
what we know right now who do you think wins in a prime fight i think all face value i'm going really because i think roger and whitebeard is a wash and if we're going off of titles strictly to fighting and power scaling it's hard not to put whitebeard over roger because i think roger had the better crew but Whitebeard was still competing. However, Rayleigh and Odin is not an overwhelming matchup in Rayleigh's favor. The thing that Rayleigh has going for him is longevity, and Rayleigh has had the opportunity to show more based on what the fans have seen. From Odin's mention of Conqueror's Hockey, where Shanks would have knocked out 100,000 in Fishman Island, Rayleigh would have done the same. The fact that he's the right hand of the Pirate King, the Dark King, which implies that he's a king in his own right. Even in his old age, he was able to tussle with Kizaru, pull them off for a little bit, and even Kizaru was saying, hey, we might need more help to bring him in. He said that in his prime age he would be able to save the straw hats he seems to be at the pinnacle of observation hockey because he was the one who taught luffy and gave him some insight into future sight and things of that nature he seems to be at the pinnacle of conquerors hockey we saw what he did in the auction house he also seems to be at the pinnacle of armament hockey he was the first person we saw to use rio well not really because the admirals used it but he's one of the few people that we've seen use rio and rio of course i'm talking about advanced armament hockey we, i could just say that because rio means hockey in wano but saying rio implies advanced armament Okay, there's a lot to go off to easily say that Rayleigh edges out Odin, but I think we have to look at what the story is telling us. Whitebeard was trudging along, a great pirate in his own right, but that's not how he was introduced. He's introduced as Whitebeard, right? Not even the strongest pirate in the world at that point. Doesn't have his scars, so I don't think he's fought Roger yet. Roger was introduced as the great pirate. That's what his box said. And also, he's introduced as Gold Roger, which is interesting in itself, but regardless. So I think Whitebeard, even though he was great in his own right, hadn't accomplished much with the crew that he had. And now knowing how that crew panned out, not a very impressive crew. Of course, Marco, Jozu, Vista, those guys, they go on to become commanders. But the others who were, I assume, some of the strongest in his crew, like Rakio, YD Bay, Andre, those guys leave much to be desired. And from where we are now, Roger dies in about six years. So these battles have to come really soon. Whitebeard doesn't have anyone on the level of Rayleigh at this point, before Odin. If we're assuming Scopper is the Sanji of Roger's crew, he should be formidable in his own right. And I don't know if Whitebeard even had anybody to combat with him so for whitebeard to balance it out and what the story is telling us based off of how the newspaper is now giving whitebeard more credit or more attention than roger odin was the deciding factor so for odin off of just base strength from what we've seen so far from going into korea and overthrowing it by himself something we have to factor in is the hype of the wano samurai that people didn't even want to go in there and odin he was already one of the strongest if not the strongest samurai in wano at the time so the legends they were talking about of course is in regards to ryuma but Odin was now carrying that mantle. Outside of that, he boasts Conqueror's Hockey. And the greatest feat I think really can't even touch at this point is the fact that Odin was able to scar Kaido. A young Kaido. Young Gur, I should say. I'm not sure how old Kaido is, but a young Gur Kaido. The argument against that is that we don't know exactly how strong Kaido was at the time because this is 20 years from the current storyline. However, it's implied that the Yonko, they hit their stride at some point. Whitebeard is obviously hitting his stride and has his crew. I'm assuming two decades later, Kaido should be formidable. Because remember, God's Valley was, what, 38 years ago? Odin died 20 years before the current storyline. So it's almost two decades of Kaido becoming stronger from God's Valley, where he was an apprentice under rocks. That Kaido should be close to Yonko level. And from the hype of Enma, the hype of Amino Habikiri, there's no way you can't see that Odin is the great equalizer when it comes to Roger and Whitebeard. At this point, I'm giving Rayleigh the slight edge because I think there's nothing there we can put Odin over Rayleigh. But I think there's a lot there to say that Odin can definitely compete with Rayleigh. The reason why I'm making this video Video here is that I think in next chapter 965 we actually see Rayleigh and Odin interact. I may be jumping the gun a bit because Oda might skip that but the fact that he brought up Roger and based on the pacing of this flashback it only makes sense that Oda now shows Whitebeard and Roger meeting and if they show a meeting I assume he also shows maybe not show the entire thing but a montage of the fact that Roger and Whitebeard they got into a lot of battles after that. Roger became smitten with Odin because at this point Roger wants to meet Odin because of course he's an adventurer and he wants to know so much so now a samurai from the barred off island wano is on whitebeard's crew let me go see him but guys give me your thoughts based off the things i laid out not who do you think would win because i think it's easy to say Rayleigh at this point do you think odin can compete with Rayleigh, or do you think it's disrespectful to compare odin to Rayleigh? i was doing that in my reviews and people were saying i was disrespectful i don't think i was even close to being disrespectful based on what the story was telling us and off of portrayal but give me your thoughts guys what do you think because i think it's pretty clear
So that's it for me, guys. Make sure to like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter at BragoDAce. Follow me on Instagram at BragoD.Ace. Thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Stream later this week to talk about my Patreon and my rewards and things of that nature. I'll discuss it with you guys. And I want to do a stream on this channel because there's no chapter this week and maybe no chapter next week as well. So there's that. So yeah, leave your thoughts below. Like the video and subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.